Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ocean Science After School. I'm Alex from Pierce Park Sailing Center, and today we're gonna to be learning about buoyancy. Have you ever wondered how a cargo ship or a cruise ship or an oil tanker is able to float in the water when it's so heavy? It's because of buoyancy. When an object is in the water, gravity pulls the object down and displaces some of the water, which means some of the water is pushed aside, away from the boat. Gravity pulls the displaced water downward and causes an upward force on the object, which is called buoyancy. The amount of water displaced depends on the volume of the object, how big it is. Volume is the amount of space that the ship takes up, uh, which is a different concept than density. Density is how much something weighs, or its mass, divided by its total volume. A higher volume or bigger size causes more fluid to be displaced, which means the boat becomes more buoyant. Boat designers have to consider buoyancy as well as friction when deciding on the shape of a boat's hull. You can make a boat really, really large, which will make it really buoyant, but that also creates more friction in the water, which means the boat is going to move more slowly. If you make the hull more streamlined so that there's less friction in the water, the boat can move faster, but it's less buoyant, which means that it can hold less weight. A boat designed for speed has to have enough displacement to stay afloat, but the surface area should be small so that there's less friction. Nowadays, you can see this sort of thing in a foiling sailboat, where the boat almost looks like it's flying, it comes so high out of the water, which means there's very, very little friction. The boats can go faster even than the wind speed that's moving them. Uh, catamaran ferries that you see in the harbor have two hulls, which means there's less area overall touching the water, creates less friction, so the boat can move faster, but it's still buoyant enough that it can hold a lot of passengers. On the other hand, objects that are designed to carry heavy weight have to be designed with much more displacement, which means a lot more volume. Ships like this are container ships, cruise ships, and other really large ships that you see in the harbor. For our buoyancy lesson, we have an experiment that you can do at home. And actually, you can do it as a contest. So, see who at home can make the most buoyant boat. Which boat can float? The most pennies. You need a few different materials for this experiment. The first is tin foil. I've cut it into six inch squares. Just use any tin foil. If you have a large container, you can do larger squares. You need a container of water for the boat to float. A bunch of pennies to weigh down the boat, see how buoyant it is. This experiment comes from the NOAA Office of Education. It also has a worksheet that goes along with it. You can go to pierceparksailing.org slash OSAS if you want to download the worksheet. So for the experiment, you're going to design different styles of boats to see which is the most buoyant and can hold the most pennies. To start with, I'm going to do a catamaran, which we know has a lot of speed because there's not much friction with the water, but is not a very buoyant boat. So I'm going to take my six inch by six inch piece of tin foil and rip it in half. And I'm going to use, rip it in half again, this part to make the two hulls of the boat by rolling them up. Then I'm going to take the middle part and fold it over so it's got a little bit more strength. Wrap it around the two hulls to keep it in place. Okay, here's my catamaran. It's not beautiful, but it will float. I'm going to put it into my container of water. And now we're going to see how many pennies it can hold probably not going to be very many. Can it even hold one? If I balance it on there just right. No, I don't even think it can hold one penny. I'll try pressing it down a little, see if I can make it hold. Okay, there we go. How about two? Nope. <laughs> it sinks at two. So the catamaran, while it can move through the water quickly because there's very little friction, 
it can't hold a whole lot of weight. Okay, I'm gonna try a different design now. I'm gonna go with a more traditional boat hull. Roll it up on the sides. Make a transom in the back. This is definitely gonna displace a lot more water. So I think it's probably gonna hold a lot more than two pennies too. Okay, let's see how many this one can hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Keep in the middle. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Pretty good. 21, 22, 23, 24. 24 sank the boat. So a lot better than the catamaran on how much water it displaces, how many pennies it can hold. This would be a much slower design, obviously, because there's much more friction with the water, but much more effective at holding weight. Okay, for our last design, I'm going to do a raft shape, just a square. This will displace the most water. It will have the most volume in the water. It's not gonna be a fast boat because there'll be a lot of friction created, but it should hold a lot of pennies. Just folding up the sides. Okay. Let's see how many this raft design can hold. Starting off with five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. Oh, it's taking on water there. So it actually did about the same as the hull design of the other boat. Now at home, design your own and see how many pennies you can get it to hold. You can compete, see who can do the best design to hold the most. And again, if you have a larger container of water, even use a sink or a tub, you can make much larger designs, use a foot by a foot of tin foil, or even more if you want to. Thank you all very much. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Ocean Science After School and tune in for our next lesson at piersparksailing.org OSAS.